Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and thank you once again for coming back for more daily NBA news and discussions. This offseason has been pretty lit so far. One of the craziest offseasons in NBA history. Jimmy Butler to the Wolves, Paul George to the Thunder, Chris Paul to the Rockets, Paul Millsap went to the Nuggets, Gordon Hayward to the Celtics, a Melo to Houston trade that is supposedly supposed to happen, then the Kyrie trade talks as well all of a sudden. I don't think there has ever been this many star players moved in one single summer. Crazy. And today, we're not talking about any of those moves. We're not talking about any of those players, any of those trades. Matter of fact, anything that could happen in the next year. But instead, we're talking about something that could go down next year that could possibly change the landscape of the NBA, and if not the NBA, at least in the Eastern Conference. Lord knows the East needs it. These rumors have been around for a little bit now, but were given more life a couple of days ago when John Wall, one of the best point guards, not even point guards, one of the best players in the NBA, who was coming off an amazing season and if it weren't for the jaw-dropping numbers put up by James Harden and Russell Westbrook, could have been in the MVP conversation himself. The man was balling out last year. That was the Wizards team where at the beginning of the season, they didn't even look like they were gonna make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. However, thanks to John Wall balling out, they only missed the Eastern Conference Finals by one game. And John Wall is still only 26 years old. He hasn't even played the best years of his career yet. I don't know about you, but that's pretty scary to me. Anyways, getting a bit off track here, I just get kind of excited when talking about players like John Wall. Like I was saying, a couple of days ago, John Wall agreed to a four-year, $170 million contract extension with the Washington Wizards. Congrats to him on the payday, and also congrats to the Wizards on managing to keep one of the best players in the NBA. It seems that's something that's getting harder and harder to do in the NBA nowadays. And to me, the fact that John Wall signed that contract extension is pretty telling of what the future for the Washington Wizards could be. Just a couple of weeks ago, John Wall wasn't sure if he wanted to sign the contract extension. The Wizards had originally proposed the extension to him at least two weeks ago. And when they brought it to him, John Wall told them that he wasn't sure if he wanted to sign it. He said he'd have to think about it. Whenever a player is offered $170 million, more money than any other team could pay them, and they tell you, I have to think about it, that's one of the biggest red flags you could possibly get. Because if he doesn't sign it, that means he is most likely as good as gone when it is time for him to become a free agent. And for John Wall, that would have been in 2019. The Rockets had just approached James Harden with the exact same contract extension offer, and he signed it right away. Matter of fact, I think he snuck into Daryl Morey's offense and signed it before they even officially offered it to him. That's how fast he signed it. Contract extensions are basically marriage proposals in the NBA. Wizards basically got down on one knee and proposed to John Wall and he said maybe. It's just a very awkward situation to be in. Obviously it all worked out for the Wizards in the end but it begs some questions. First why he was considering not signing it and then second what changed his mind to sign it. Which is what we're going to be talking about. If you've been following John Wall for the past few years in the news there's been a pretty common theme and the answer to the question is right there. John Wall wasn't very happy because he wanted to win. More than anything, that's John Wall's end goal, to win an NBA championship and to be known as one of the best players in the NBA. For a while, the Wizards weren't able to bring him either one of those things. He felt he wasn't getting enough recognition playing for Washington and he wasn't sure if he'd be able to win a ring with the Washington Wizards. So that's why he was putting off signing the contract extension because he wasn't sure that he could win with the Washington Wizards. He even said in a video, I believe, when he signed the contract to Wizards fan that his goal is to bring them a ring. What up, people? This is John Wall, just checking in, letting y'all know. I know I wasn't going nowhere. Resigned with the Wizards, man. Signed my extension. You know where I want to be. I love being in D.C. I love the organization. love my teammates. I love the amazing fans. Just had to think it out with my family and friends. We made a decision. Y'all know where I want to be at. I'm happy I'm coming back for another four years to be a Washington Wizards. Y'all know what I'm going for. Definitely going to bring y'all that championship. That's my ultimate goal, and I ain't going to stop till I get it. 
Peace, love. But then that begs the question as to what on earth makes John Wall think he can win with the Washington Wizards? I mean, they're a good team at all, don't get me wrong, but by no means are they championship contenders right now. The Golden State Warriors are dominating the NBA for at least the next three years. And not only that, the Wizards still have to prove they can get out of the Eastern Conference. They still have to go through the Cleveland Cavaliers and even prove that they can make it past the Boston Celtics. And Washington really hasn't even done anything anything this summer to drastically improve their chances of beating either of those teams. The Celtics added Gordon Hayward and also drafted Jason Tatum, so they got better. And the Cavs are a mess, but they're still the favorites to come out of the East. So what is it that all of a sudden caused John Wall to have a change of heart and determine that the Wizards will provide him with a chance to win a ring down the line. Once again, the answer to that question is pretty simple. DeMarcus Cousins, the man who is set to become an unrestricted free agent next summer. Everyone knows that John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins are basically best friends. Cousins said back in December that he and John Wall have discussed playing together in the NBA at some point. They want to play together. They were teammates back in Kentucky before the NBA and now they're looking to team up in the NBA. At the time though, there was one big problem. Neither one of them were willing to leave the team they were on to go to the other player's team. John Wall wanted Cousins in DC and Cousins wanted John Wall in Sacramento. Cousins loved Sacramento. He never had any intentions of leaving in the first place, but the Kings front office had other plans in store for him. And now obviously since he isn't with the Kings, the organization that he was loyal to, he is basically free to go wherever he wants in free agency. So I don't think it's too hard to believe that he and Wall could reunite in DC next summer. And according to a report that came out yesterday, that is also what a bunch of other NBA executives around the league believe. And the idea of Cousins to DC, I believe is what the Washington Wizards sold John Wall on. When they went to John Wall with the contract extension, he told them that he wants to see the bigger picture before he decided to commit any more years of his career to that team. So what the Wizards did is they went and printed out a picture of DeMarcus Cousins wearing a Wizards jersey and showed that to John Wall and said this is the bigger picture right here. John Wall then maybe called up DeMarcus Cousins, asked if he would even consider coming to DC in the first place. Maybe DeMarcus Cousins said yeah but I'm not trying to start anything so I don't know. But I'm assuming he did because that's why John Wall committed to an extension with the Washington Wizards. And now here we are. This article comes out claiming the exact same thing. GMs around the league believe that DeMarcus Cousins will end up playing with John Wall next year. So that is the whole thought process as to why John Wall signed with the Washington Washington Wizards. He wants to win a ring and he wants to play with DeMarcus Cousins. Signing with the Wizards gives him a chance to possibly do both. But that being said, could a core of John Wall, Bradley Beal, and DeMarcus Cousins actually be good enough to win a ring in the NBA? Would they be good enough to beat the Golden State Warriors? I don't know, maybe one year? A lot can happen in the NBA in five years. I'm saying five years because that's most likely how long this core would have in order to do that. And with the core of DeMarcus Cousins, Bradley Beal, and John Wall, the talent is most definitely there. They still have to fill out their bench because that is a huge area of concern. But like I was saying, who knows what the NBA could even look like like in five years, maybe this team would then be good enough to win a championship. If this 2017 NBA offseason has taught me anything at all, it's that you can't predict what will and what won't happen. As a team or a player, if you want to win, all you can do really is put yourself in the best position at that time to win a championship and then just go with the flow of whatever else happens. And if the Wizards are serious about landing the Mike's Cousins, then you really can't ask to be in a better position if you are John Wall. But that's going to lead us to the question of the day. Do you think that DeMarcus Cousins will end up on the Washington Wizards? If so, do you think that they will ever win a championship with that team? Let me know down in the comment section below. But now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. And yesterday, after Magic Johnson said that he expects Brandon Ingram to score at least 20 points per game this year, I asked you guys what your expectations are for Brandon Ingram this year. And here is what you said. Before Brandon Ingram thinks about scoring, 20 points he should get to 20 pounds question of the day brandon ingram is going to be a scorer but that's all best career stats 25 points per game seven rebounds per game 
four assists per game. Question of the day, I don't think Brandon Ingram has that killer instinct to do that yet. I do believe he'll average somewhere close to that with the addition of Lonzo Ball and a hungry Julius Randle on that roster. I don't think Ingram has it in him to be the focal point of this Lakers team. There's just something that you see in players like KD and LeBron when they were young and now even Alonzo Ball and Jason Tatum that just lets you know that they're hungry for buckets. I don't see that in Brandon Ingram yet. P.S. Love your vids. Please choose this comment so I can press my girlfriend. I got you, fam. But I don't know. When KD first came into the league, he was kind of like Brandon Ingram is now. He wasn't the same player he is today. He was kind of quiet, kind of like the nice guy. But like you said, he did still get a bucket. And I think Ingram could be the same. Like I said yesterday, 20 points per game would be the absolute best case scenario for Ingram in my eyes. And I think somewhere like 15 to 17 would be more realistic. Like always though, don't forget to leave your answer for the question of the day down in the comment section below. But other than that, Thank you once again for watching the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more daily NBA videos. And until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets, Team ITC, and I'm out of here. Peace!